the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer that we've made with the layer mask. I'm going to right mouse click and go convert to smart object. So I now have her as a smart object. Now I'm going to double click that. So now I just have her isolated and I'm going to work just on her here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select her dress so that I can recolor it without affecting her. So to do that, I'm going to click on the image part here, as opposed to the mask, go on my quick selection tool and just start selecting this dress here. So I'm sim simply clicking and dragging. And the quick selection tool um, is a bit finicky, but the speed in which you make the selection to a degree determines how good the selection is. So kind of as you go around, don't try to speed it too much. I'm not too worried about that because I can use my mask to get rid of anything that overshoots the dress there. Now I'm holding down Option to get the arm out of the selection here. Some of this I'll have to clean up after the fact. This is gonna do a good job of uh, just kind of making a basic selection here. Good, so now with these overshoots, what I wanna do is I wanna intersect my selection that I've just made with the mask. So to do that, I'm gonna hold down Command, Option, and Shift, and you'll see the on my uh, cursor here, it's changed to an X for intersect. If I click on that, you'll see it's now just selecting that area. So now, quick mask. If I hit Q on the keyboard, that's gonna bring up a quick mask. And a quick, ba a quick mask basically allows you to paint and use like your gradient tool and your paint tools to adjust your selection after the fact. So if I go onto my brush tool, I wanna make sure my foreground and back, uh, background are black and white, so I'll hit D. And then I wanna make my brush smaller. So to adjust the size of my brush, I have three options. My first one is to right mouse click and I can adjust the size here and the hardness, which is the feather of the brush. I can also interactively do it by holding control and option at the same time. And by dragging left and right, I'm gonna change the diameter or the size of the brush. And by dragging up and down, I'm gonna adjust the feather of the brush. And then lastly, by holding by uh, clicking on the right bracket and the left bracket, I can interactively change the size of the brush, which is nice uh, while you're painting to just kind of hold your fingers on the right and left bracket. And then you can make changes here. So for example, here, what I want to do is I, would, I just want to, any little spots that were missed, I want to paint. And this is also where X comes into play. So Parts of the image that I want, I can paint, but you'll see right now it's painting out my selection rather than painting it in. So if I click X, I'm now to my white brush. And I can also use the lasso tool. So I just hit L for lasso to get this light, tight little corner here. And then fill, option, delete, as discussed earlier. Now here it's a bit hard to tell what the original arm looked like, just because this red is a bit overpowering. So to adjust that, I'm gonna go to channels, double click on the quick mask, and change the opacity here to 25%. Now I can see a little bit better what this selection should be. There you go. Now 
as I'm using the lasso tool, I hold down the option key. And what that does is it changes the lasso tool from the normal lasso, which is click and drag, to the polygonal lasso, which is click, click again, click again, and so forth. And the reason for that is when you're using the lasso tool, um, if you accidentally let go, you're going to lose the selection you've made. And there's really no way of going back from that. You can't Command Z one click. But by holding the Option key, you get the same behavior if you click and drag as the normal lasso tool. But if you let go, your selection doesn't close. It just hangs on to your cursor until you make another click or let go of the Option key. So for example, if I go here and then let go of the Option key, it's now going to close it. And that looks quite good. So now I can hit Q again. And now what I want to do is I want to add a curve. And you'll see, because I had a selection there, the curve layer that I've added automatically has a mask already in place.